Well, the 2020 Democratic Party primary is officially getting ugly, and it is all because of Bernie Sanders. Now, of course, you would believe that if you only consumed mainstream media, but Politico published a piece where they are alleging that Bernie Sanders is now stealthily attacking Elizabeth Warren, or more specifically, they're saying that Bernie is instructing his volunteers to attack Elizabeth Warren. So as Alex Thompson and Holly Otterbein of Politico write, Sanders' campaign has begun stealthily attacking Warren as a candidate of the upper crust who could not expand the Democratic base in a general election, according to talking points his campaign is using to sway voters and obtained by Politico. The script instructs Sanders' volunteers to tell voters leading toward the Massachusetts senator that the people who support her are highly educated, more affluent people who are going to show up and vote Democratic no matter what, and that she's bringing no new bases into the Democratic Party. I like Elizabeth Warren. Optional, the script begins. In fact, she's my second choice. But here's my concern about her. It then pivots to the criticisms of Warren. Now, I don't know why Politico chose to characterize this as an attack in the first place, because if you're just citing the demographics of people who support a particular candidate, you know, assuming that you have the statistical data to back it up, that's not an attack. That's just stating a fact. And I mean, I'm sure that most campaigns have some type of script so that way their volunteers know how to respond to, you know, a voter that they contact if they support a different campaign. But what really makes this ironic is that Politico is calling this an attack when they're the ones who originally published this attack because back in July, this is an article that they put out, quote, Sanders and Warren voters have astonishingly little in common. His backers are younger, make less money, have fewer degrees, and are less engaged in politics. And if you'll notice, the author of this article is none other than Holly Otterbein, who is the same person who co-published the article that we just read where this statistic is, you know, apparently an attack or a stealth attack, as they put it. And they also tweeted out what they now deem is an attack on Warren. And as 2020 candidate Anthony Clark puts it, you can't make this shit up. Exactly. This is a perfect example of how the corporate media tries to manufacture some type of controversy. They cited statistics wrote an article about this, and now that same author is saying because one of Bernie's volunteers is using this data that we published, well, that's an attack on Elizabeth Warren. So the story in and of itself is nonsensical, but you would expect Elizabeth Warren to not take the bait because that's what she's done. However, she didn't do that. She took this story, ran with it, and is now playing the victim, and she's saying, I can't believe that Bernie Sanders would attack me like this and trash me like this. She's feigning outrage. So take a look at what she had to say. The Bernie Sanders campaign and the way that they are talking about you at the doors here in Iowa, basically saying that your voters are people who will vote Democrat anyway, that you don't bring new bases into the Democratic tent. Why is he wrong? I was disappointed to hear that Bernie is sending his volunteers out to trash me. Bernie knows me and has known me for a long time. Uh, he knows who I am, where I come from, what I have worked on and fought for, and the coalition and grassroots movement we're trying to build. Democrats want to win in 2020. We all saw the impact of the factionalism in 2016, and we can't have a repeat. Um, Democrats need to unite our party, and that means pulling in all parts of the Democratic coalition. It means building a grassroots movement with face-to-face -face conversations with people who do or not. It means getting a positive message out to people. That's how we will lead Donald Trump. We cannot nominate someone who takes big chunks of the Democratic coalition for granted. We need someone who will bring our party together. We need someone who will excite every part of the Democratic party. Someone who will, um, who will be the, someone that every Democrat can believe in. I hope Bernie reconsiders and turns his campaign in a different direction. 
much. You say you need someone, though, who every Democrat can get behind. Is that not Bernie Sanders? I believe we need someone every Democrat can get behind. I'm out there fighting for every Democrat. So um, she took the bait. And she is absolutely playing the victim. And I'll tell you why I think she's doing this. But she says, I was disappointed to hear that Bernie sent his volunteers out to trash me. And I hope Bernie reconsiders and turns his campaign in a different direction. Really, Warren? Really? Now, on top of that, um, she essentially implies that he was responsible for the division in 2016 after she admitted in 2017 that the DNC rigged the primary against Bernie Sanders. So if that were the case, if she believed that, even if she walked it back, you know, of course, it wouldn't be Bernie who was responsible for the division. Wouldn't you assume that it was the establishment for fucking over Bernie and his supporters that catalyzed this division in the first place? So, I mean, she is taking this story and she's running with it. And I think it's because she knows her numbers are down. She needs to attack Bernie Sanders in order to increase in the polls and gain more articles about herself, but she doesn't want to come across as the bad guy. So what is she doing? She's playing victim, so that way she can attack Bernie Sanders or claim that he's attacking her, and then she can attack him and say, well, look, he drew first blood. I think this is what she's trying to do, but what's even more interesting about this is the story was misrepresented by Politico because a Bernie Sanders volunteer actually reached out and confirmed that this wasn't something that the Bernie you know, headquarters, if you will, had sent out and instructed people in the campaign to do. This is just something that one Bernie volunteer posted in a Slack group for Bernie volunteers. And Eric Isaac, who's a Bernie volunteer, clarified on Twitter saying, here's what actually happened. A random user who's only ever posted once before posted that document in the Sanders volunteer Slack group. A moderator promptly removed it and stated that it was not a campaign source. Bernie is not sending his volunteers out to trash any candidate. We have a very strict code of conduct on how we must interact with voters if we want to be part of the campaign. Politico and every other outlet reporting on this non-story are being incredibly irresponsible. I would happily post a screenshot of the conversation in Slack, but then I would be violating the agreement I made with the campaign to not share screenshots from Slack. They delete anything that talks about any other candidate in a negative way. I could right now go dump a document criticizing every candidate in Warren's campaign's app, then screenshot it and send it to Politico so they could write a story about it. This was not a campaign maneuver, period. So given that Elizabeth Warren probably has the same type of platform where her volunteers communicate, she should know that this story and the details about it were dubious, but she took the bait and she decided to run with it because she wanted some type of excuse to attack Bernie Sanders herself. Now, she decided to take this to the next level. She doubled down and is now fundraising off of this attack lobbed against her by Bernie's campaign. So she sent out an email this morning saying, last night we got some disappointing news. Bernie Sanders' campaign is instructing volunteers to dismiss our broad-based inclusive campaign, saying the people who support Elizabeth are highly educated, more affluent people. When I heard that description, I didn't recognize it. That doesn't describe me or many of the passionate volunteers and organizers I know. This type of attack isn't about dis agreeing on issues. It's about dismissing the potency of our grassroots movement. Let's be clear, as a party and as a country, we can't afford to repeat the factionalism of the 2016 primary to win in November. We need a nominee who can unite a broad coalition of Democrats who will excite every part of the Democratic Party and inspire more people to join the fight. If you want the Democratic primary to be about a substantive vision for a country that works for everyone, I'm asking you to support our campaign with a contribution right now. So she's doubling down and once again implying that Bernie Sanders is responsible for the divisiveness in 2016. Not the DNC, not Hillary Clinton, but Bernie Sanders. That's the implication here. And believe it or not, she actually doesn't want to have a substantive policy discussion with Bernie Sanders because his platform is better than hers in every conceivable way. The only thing I agree more with Elizabeth Warren on is totally getting rid of the filibuster, but when it comes to policy issues... He's better than her. He goes further on every single issue, and he's more reliable because he has a multi-decade record of fighting for all of these same issues. Now, Elizabeth Warren is a very smart person, and she knows exactly what she's doing. I think she knows that the details of the story are dubious and that this isn't really even an attack, but this is a strategy. Look, here's the thing. When you are down in the polls, then it's really good for you to attack 
your opponent. But the thing about attacks is that sometimes they backfire. Oftentimes, if you attack someone, you can drive down their support, but you also simultaneously drive down your support. So the best way to attack someone is to respond to their attacks strategically and statistically that's the best way so she really desperately wants people to think that bernie sanders is the one who instigated all of these attacks he started so now that she's attacking him she doesn't look as bad it's strategy and it tells you that she's not really an ally she doesn't actually care about the progressive movement she's just in this for herself so i mean this is incredibly disappointing to see her doing this but i mean it's getting to a point where Iowa is taking place in weeks, and she's behind in the polls. The Des Moines Register just found that he's three points ahead of her. He's in first place in Iowa, and she's freaking out, and I think rightfully so. So strategically, it makes sense for her to go after Bernie Sanders in this way. But I just would have expected, I guess, better from Elizabeth Warren. I would have expected her to not be so disingenuous in her attacks on Bernie Sanders and understand this is an attack on Bernie Sanders by Elizabeth Warren. He didn't start this, she did. But I want everyone who's watching this who supports Bernie Sanders to be mindful of the fact that anything we say about Bernie Sanders can be used by the establishment as a representation of Bernie's campaign. Even if we have nothing to do with Bernie Sanders, they're going to use what you say to attack Bernie Sanders. So watch everything you say and acknowledge that we all represent the movement, like it or not. And, um, yeah, I don't know what else to say. This is incredibly disappointing to see Elizabeth Warren, you know, use this manufactured disingenuous story to attack Bernie Sanders, but she wants to win and she doesn't really care if it hurts the aggregate progressive movement. I don't think she really cares about being part of it. She just wants to be the nominee and she knows that her opponent is in the lead and she has to attack him if she wants a boost. So, um, I wouldn't be surprised if she attacked Bernie Sanders at tomorrow's debate, but she doesn't want to talk about policy. Understand that because Bernie Sanders will win that discussion 10 times out of 10 because he's just better than her on that. So she has to resort to these types of manufactured controversies in order to try to bring him down. So rather than targeting, you know, Joe Biden, Pete Buttigieg, she's going after Bernie Sanders. So um, this is disgusting. And Elizabeth Warren needs to understand that if she's truly worried about divisiveness, then further dividing the progressive movement isn't the best way to go about this. And I'll leave that there.